as I, as I mentioned, uh, I've been working since three years uh, with VMware at Ansu Labs, uh, which previously was a pivotal, pivotal labs. And uh, I'm part of the group of engineers um, who is, which is helping customers to modernize legacy software, to transform legacy software uh, toward cloud native distributed microservices based systems. And uh, during this time, I recognized that uh, some not really good design decisions are repeated again and again. And this uh, talk is actually just an attempt to maybe highlight these uh, not optimal design decisions uh, to help you to not to you know, to get into the same pitfalls. And uh, before starting to talk about design pitfalls or uh, improper design, uh, it's important to understand what is the benefits of uh, distributed microservices-based systems and why people are choosing this architectural paradigm. And uh, we live in a fast-pacing world now, and uh, business wants to do changes faster and faster. Business wants to implement features independently. Business wants to be able to deploy features independently, scale features independently. Um, an important requirement on the modern software system is to uh, be resilient, to be able to work even if part of the system is not available for whatever reason and uh, this the distributed microservices based architecture is actually a response to these requirements coming from business side because this architecture promises exactly what business needs in our day it promises uh, to support independently deployable changes it promises independent scalability of different features. It uh, promises a resilient software. And the most important thing, it promises a horizontal scalability of uh, engineering teams. It uh, promises that you can set up more and more small product teams, which will be developing different parts of the system and these teams can work independently, can work autonomously, <coughs> and produce software fast, which is a nice promise. Um, on the other hand, from the engineering point of view, this architecture is um, a way more complex than a monolithic system. So if it's possible to avoid doing a distributed system. It's actually a kind of a good decision from the engineering point of view. You know, the less moving parts we have in, in systems, then the less for us to support, uh, the easier for us to support these kind of systems, the, yeah, the easier for us to, to operate the systems. Um, saying, uh, like, listen, uh, yeah, saying about all these uh, nice promises, uh, what distributed systems can bring, uh, <clears throat> the reality, unfortunately, is not as bright as as uh, as these promises. And uh, working with different customers in different industries, greenfield, brownfield projects, uh, we saw different systems, and some of them are well-designed system. Some of them are not so well-designed. And uh, there are like, clear characteristics which can help to identify badly designed and well-designed distributed systems. Like First of all, the badly designed systems, they are um, identified by tight coupling between components. If a new feature needs to be implemented, these changes are spread, spread across services they are not uh, atomic they're not possible to be implemented inside one service often this kind of system they have too many services uh, 
uh, maintenance and operation of the system is very difficult. So effectively, uh, these systems are like a microservices based distributed monolith in the end. And on the other hand, there are also certain characteristics described in the well-designed distributed systems. Uh, first of all, the composition uh, split to microservices in these systems is based on uh, business capabilities or bounding context, if we are talking domain driven design, design language. Uh, also, these systems using event driven architecture, especially the choreography based uh, communication patterns. <coughs> Um, now I'd like to move uh, into examples and show in a few examples and to represent these examples uh, I'm going to use a Boris diagram. The Boris diagram is an invention of uh, my uh, unfortunately former colleague. He moved to another company now, uh, Sean Anderson. He is inventor of uh, Boris diagrams and inventor of Swift methodology. It's a great methodology. Uh, we are successfully using this, this methodology at VMware since I think four or five years now. Uh, we apply this methodology when we want to modernize a big system. We want to understand the big system. And, and Boris diagramming is one part of the bigger Swift methodology. And it's a very lightweight um, way to represent the system. Uh, the artifacts which are used uh, on the Boris diagram are following. Uh, the blue box represents a microservice. A green box represents an external system. And important difference to let's say UML diagram, that <clears throat> different color scheme is used to represent different communication patterns. The blue line is used to represent a synchronous communication, and red line is used to represent a synchronous communication. And the red box is on a red line is used to represent a topic or a queue. And then that, uh, let's go to the, First example, <clears throat> and all examples I'm going to show today are from an order management system, but they just examples. They're showing some patterns, uh, so they, you you can find this kind of patterns in other systems as well. So it's not about order management; it's more about showing some patterns. Uh, and the first like uh, problem I'd like to talk about is about too many microservices. Uh, on this diagram, we see an order microservice, which uh, exposes a create order endpoint, which can be called by external systems. And in order to execute this create order um, function, the order microservice needs to go to order validation microservice, and call validate order endpoint, uh, and then order microservice needs to go to order calculation microservice, call and calculate order endpoints, probably to calculate some uh, sums. And all these calls are synchronous calls. And the problem here is that uh, effectively, none of these microservices is capable of work on its own. They are all tightly coupled. They, um, if one of them is not available, then none of them can actually deliver any value. Can can they can't work? Uh, this is um, uh, effectively this order validation and order calculation, they're just functions belonging to the same business domain, to the order business domain. <clears throat> and there is no real reason to uh, split them into different microservices because it just increased complexity of our system without bringing any, any value. So 
a better solution, in my opinion, would be just to put all these functions in one microservice, having the order domain or the microservice responsible for managing the order information. And that would be it. As you can see on the right-hand side, this is a solution I would suggest you to do, and this is a much easier solution. It's easier to to. I, I uh, have a question. Sure. Um, like, yeah, uh, it's clear. Like your your point is clear, uh, but you said that um, these microservices on the left are entirely coupled. But from my perspective, calculate order, for example, sounds quite independent sync and uh, I mean, maybe not when you create order, but when you get order, you don't need to calculate order. Um, but if you need to create many orders, you probably need you probably would want to um, add uh, several instances to speed up the process, but several instances just of calculator because it uh, for me, it sounds like something heavy operations going there. Is it, is it a good reason for separating? Uh, if I understood you correctly, like in your system, the system you're talking about, uh, you want to scale the order calculation independently from order because uh, for whatever reason. Uh, maybe maybe it's, 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 a, yeah, it's a good reason. Uh, to have an independent microservice. Uh, the questions you have to answer, uh, who is the owner of the order information? Do you really need to synchronize the order all the way down to order calculation? Anytime order is changed, you have to synchronize it there, or order calculation, we go back to order. Who is the owner of the data? Who is the owner of the order, right? This is an important question to answer. Um, if you have a solution for this? Fine, go for it. Okay. But, uh, yeah. Short question, but um, maybe we uh, understand. Well, yeah, like to answer your question, who is the owner? Yeah, like order maker service, I think, is the um, owner of the data. But uh, yeah, like just imagine if we have uh, in order calculation, like we need something else to calculate order. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know items some items and let's imagine we have items maker service and uh, to calculate order we need items then like how, how it will be yeah so for me items they belong into order <laughs> uh like uh, um i i think i understand what you want to say that in some cases the order calculation is really something different from order and it's a valid business domain maybe i don't know your system right um, and it's not about i didn't want to say that uh the order calculation always must be part of an order it really depends on your system what i wanted to point it out here is that if you have uh, as an endpoint and in order to uh, implement the functionality needed by this endpoint you have to call two other microservices or even one other microservice synchronously and probably something is not really right in your design because your microservice your initial microservice is not capable to do its functionality on its own it needs something from the other service and it needs it always. And this is a smell. <clears throat> and the similar situation, what I saw uh, is when people start to take every noun in their system and start building the microservice for every noun, like uh, having a, a customer address microservice and then customer microservice and uh, I don't know, maybe something else around customer, but I saw this customer address and customer. What, what's the point to split it? You know, why not to build a customer profile microservice, have everything in one microservice? What, because it's really tightly connected. If you want to validate customer profile and saying that customer profile is valid, uh, with a solution when these two were split, 
the only place where you can do it. You can do it only in UI because this is the only place where information from both microservices were gathered together. Um, so like the general message here is that uh, be aware about the price you gonna pay if you have more and more microservices. The more moving parts you have in your system, the more difficult it is to maintain the system. The more difficulties uh, to analyze errors in case of an error. Right, so be cautious about number of microservices, um, especially like in this case when they are really tightly connected and they are not capable to do their work without each other. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can we move on? Sure. <laughs> All right. Okay, then let's move on to the next example, which is again about tightly coupled microservices. And uh, on this diagram, we see another microservice and we see a fulfillment microservice. And the communication between these two is going uh, asynchronously. So there is um, a topic in between them. An order microservice emits a ship order event which uh, in fulfillment listens to these events and uh, starts the fulfillment when, uh, when this event uh, comes. And uh, the problem with the solution is that the, the upstream microservice actually knows about the downstream microservice. Like the order knows about fulfillment. Moreover, order partially implements the fulfillment logic in this case, because order microservice must know uh, when is the right time to actually start the fulfillment, which is a fulfillment business domain, which is both fulfillment logic. Um, <clears throat> so this kind of solution, this kind of communication pattern is uh, the orchestration type of communication, the upstream system, orchestrates the downstream systems. The upstream system commands downstream system when and what to do. And this is uh, the orchestration-like type of communication. And the better solution in many cases is to change this communication pattern to be uh, the choreography-like communication. In this case, a system emits events saying that something has happened inside the system. You know, like uh, order can emit an event saying, hey, I have accepted a new order. Whoever is interested in doing something at this point in, the, in this point in time, do it. Uh, with this small change, small semantical change of event, um, the order doesn't depend on fulfillment anymore. The order can work autonomously, just producing events when something happened inside the order and fulfillment can uh, listen to these events and also decide, is it the right time for me to start a shipment of an order or not? Any questions? Uh, red, red square, it is Q, right? It's a Q, Q a topic, yeah. It's a message in middle. So the, so the only difference is uh, like in naming, let's say, how we read this. Uh, the on difference is all, also in, um, <clears throat> in, 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 in the time when this event, uh, and in semantic of this event, in the, on the left-hand side, the event is semantically is a command. The order commands fulfillment microservice. Hey, now please ship this order. Start a fulfillment, right? So order knows about fulfillment. And order also partially implement the fulfillment logic because order now should understand when is the right time to start the fulfillment, right? It might be 
very little logic, maybe even not little, not none of the logic, but semantically the order now is in control and in, in uh, of fulfillment, order away about existence of fulfillment. And on the right hand side, order microservice just em emits events when something uh, happen inside the order. So the change, the difference is very minimum, minimal, yeah. But um, yeah, like I understand that like, like you said in, in first, in the first picture we send the command and we kind of know about another microservice and second solution we just uh, send event and who, whoever want just subscribe and uh, do something. Right, right. But uh, is it like, and always also like at the beginning you said like it's a, a good uh, indicator that you have right microservice architecture if you have even uh, event driven design so is it but my question is is it always like is it a silver bullet i don't know because i can generate some situation when you really want to send a message to certain microservice not just send an event and hope that somebody uh, do something um if you're talking about software design like the art of software design is working with trade-offs, right? Um, it's, uh, there is no right solution for all the cases. Yeah, what, what I want to present here is just um, a solutions or my problems, which <clears throat> in many cases are problems, but not always. Right, so there are always situations when you want to use it, when you want to use a command. And at the beginning, when I said that uh, a characteristic of a well-designed distributed system is event-driven architecture. I also mentioned that uh, this event-driven architecture supposed to be using a choreography communication pattern, which is on the right-hand side. The choreography uh, communication is exactly this event-like communication, not command-like communication when the upstream microservice is independent from the downstream microservice. But there are always exceptions. Yeah, you all probably can come up with a, with a, you know, with a system where you, you want to use a command-like communication. Okay. Uh, perhaps if you stay on this slide, um, the question how you design normally this event, this message, or what I accepted, uh, is it some business fields inside uh, that's uh, relevant for all the system? What's kind of ID that uh, can ask uh, the other service to, to get the whole, the whole object? What is the best practice here? This is a good question. And I really like to move to the next slide because uh, that's where I wanted to talk about this. Okay, sorry. <laughs> no worries. <clears throat> yeah, and exactly like the, another problem I wanted to talk about is this uh, fat message. Yeah, if you look at this uh, diagram, and if this is like a, a, a complete diagram that we have an order microservice and fulfillment and a nice event in between order accepted, uh, then this diagram implies that uh, a complete information about order is uh, transported inside this event. And uh, there are two potential issues with uh, this FED messages. The first one is that some message brokers uh, uh, don't like big messages. And so if you have a fat message, you, you can put some load, extra load on the, on the message brokers and some of them don't like it. And the second issue, which is, in my opinion, a much bigger issue is that uh, if order is a mutable object, then theoretically you can have a situation that the fulfillment uh, is going to act on a stale data. Like if you if order gets two updates close in time, two uh, events will be emitted, and then uh, the fulfillment will get both events. Uh, even if your message broker can guarantee a delivery of messages in the same order as they are emitted, 
still on the fulfillment side, you might have several instances processing these messages and one instance can be faster than another one and you can end up in a situation that the first message will be processed uh, the processing of the first message will be completed after processing of the second message and you actually can override data in the fulfillment based on the stale order data which is a kind of a big uh, business issue i assume so uh, again not in all cases but <laughs> in in many cases a better solution is to have a thin or skinny message uh, which contains only IDs um, and then if the downstream system needs more information about uh, affected entity it can go to the upstream system and retrieve the most accurate the most recent data about affected entity um, questions comments thanks was exactly it um, answer on my question. Uh, well, how how do we know if fulfillment uh, finished some operations? If if we need to know, this. Um, I'm the, not sure. Like, what what will fulfillment do with the order? But when order accepted, fulfillment I don't know sent. Uh, or summarize something. Yeah, yeah, fulfillment can organize a shipment of this order, right? He can fulfillment can talk to I don't know warehouse, blocking some items and uh, issuing an like a order for a human being to actually pick up these items, pack them into a box, and deliver this box to the like, delivery company. Like that would be what fulfillment system would do okay and uh, like if we need to notify user somehow about finishing of this creation we need to like in this scheme you would add another event like fulfillment done something like that and order to subscribe uh, guys i don't know what, what what's what's going on here but you're actually asking questions about my next slide <laughs> it was andre who asked me a question about next slide and now this is a question about the next slide okay sorry <laughs> uh, and uh, in this case i wanted to talk about like leaked domain knowledge and this is exactly the situation you were talking about if i understood it correctly so we have another accepted and then we have fulfillment and fulfillment as it works and then fulfillment it means a fulfillment completed event and there is a communication domain and communication domain responsible to notify users that hey this is a tracking id which you can use to check when your you know your purchase will be delivered right and uh, the communication gets the fulfillment completed event only with IDs and communication can go to fulfillment, retrieve the fulfillment information, builds uh, the email, send it to the user who ordered this this stuff, right? And it's all nice. The problem with this uh, solution is that um, the communication microservice communication domain in this case uh, will know effectively about any other domains in your system and it will contain logic from any other domains in your system like in this particular case communication must know that when fulfillment is completed i have to send a certain message to the user and if you imagine that uh, probably when order is accepted communication also wants to send a message to a user saying hey your order is now in preparation and when invoicing is done then communication would also need to go to invoicing retrieving invoicing information and send this invoicing e email to user with uh, with an invoice the communication will become really a, a spider sitting in the web and getting information and knowledge from all the domains of your system so the uh, the problem here uh, that I, the fulfillment can't really work autonomously if 
it somehow touches the communication or needs to send maybe an additional communication uh, to the user. Um, and if you look back at what I uh, was talking about at the beginning about the distributed systems and what actually the promises of this distributed system that the promise is we want to have independent components, independent microservices, which can be developed autonomously and teams behind this microservice can work autonomously and produce more and more features without need to involve other teams, right? And this is not really the case with this solution. And uh, a better solution might be to change the dependency and saying that the communication domain contains really the logic which is connected with uh, communication, with uh, talking to a user. So communication domain can know about uh, maybe a preferable communication channel, like does user want to get SMS or email notification? You know, the communication domain can have a, a, lo uh, a knowledge about actually sending these messages through SMS or through over email and, and so on, like really communication specific knowledge and the fulfillment will have a knowledge which is fulfillment specific, namely when and what kind of message should be sent to a user and fulfillment can uh, use uh, communication given a message which shall be delivered and given a user ID, for example, saying, hey, please deliver this message to this user and then communication will take the further steps and takes care, communication will take care about delivering this message to the user. Uh, in this case, the like fulfillment and communication, they are really having their clear responsibility. Uh, the problem with this solution is that the fulfillment now has to take care about updating its own database, emitting the fulfillment completed event, and calling the communication microservice. And these three things, they have to be done all together atomically. Yeah, and in our new world with distributed systems, XA transactions are considered to be not cool anymore and they're not existing, we don't have them. And uh, with this solution, we have this, like a technical challenge, how to actually ensure that all the three actions I mentioned before, they are performed all together or none of them is performed, which is a kind of, uh, big technical challenge. And this is a very, very often the, the situation that you might have dealing with distributed systems, how to actually ensure that uh, the updates in different systems, they are performed somehow transactionally. One of the solutions is this uh, transactional outbox pattern. Uh, if you don't know it, Google for it, it's, it's a great solution which uh, can be used if a messaging middleware and database is involved. Yeah. In this particular case with the send notification, um, I can suggest something different which might look quite complex. Um, so I would suggest to split fulfillment domain, fulfillment bounded context into two microservices. Uh, it's important to mention that microservices is not equal to a bounded context, is not equal to a business domain, right? Uh, because of technical reasons, uh, we might want to have several microservices independently deployable microservices belonging to the same business domain. Uh, that was the one of the uh, questions, I think at the beginning of the session, about uh, 
all the calculation and uh, different scalability requirement and all the calculation. And that would be a technical reason to split one business domain into several microservices. Here, uh, in this example, this is another uh, technical reason that we don't want to interrupt, let's say, the main flow, uh, fulfillment flow, by the sending notification. If, if the communication service is not available, then we don't want to prevent fulfillment to be completed. And uh, also, we don't want to synchronize like all the stuff. So we might want to uh, create another microservice, the fulfillment communication microservice, which belongs to the fulfillment domain. And it might have a time triggered job, a scheduled job inside, which will monitor fulfillment database for fulfillments which are completed, but um, which are not notified. Like the user are not notified about completion of this fulfillment. And then this fulfillment communication can actually call the communication domain triggering notification. <coughs> um, is this solution uh, suppose that the fulfillment communication and fulfillment, they use the same, they both of them use the same database which is kind of against the dogma, but uh, in my opinion, the dogma is just not properly understood. And uh, the dogma must say not every microservice should have a database, but every bounded context, every business domain should have an independent database. And if you have uh, several microservices belonging to the same bounded context, um, then, in my opinion, it's totally fine if they work with the same database. Because all other solutions would mean enormous uh, uh, like the complexity of your system will go up very fast and very, very high. But I didn't get why not to replace uh, direct communication with database uh, from fulfillment communication microservice to just sending request to fulfillment to get basically the same information. But that's possible. Through this microservice, that's possible. It's just more complex, and uh, more complex. Yep because you have to do the remote invocation. We, we can draw a blue line between fulfillment communication and fulfillment. That would work. Um, you would ask, uh, give me all the not notified yeah. fulfillment, then you do the communication, uh, you call communications, and you actually need to do another blue line from fulfillment communication to fulfillment to actually mark uh, the fulfillments for which notifications uh, have been sent as already like notified, right? Completion, fulfillment completion notified or whatever. It's possible, yeah, that's another option. You can draw several blue lines between fulfillment communication and fulfillment, that will work. But okay. that's, uh, in my opinion, that's an, unneeded complexity. Because again, normally, okay, normally, what is normally? But in most cases, you have a team responsible for certain domain. Sometimes you have team responsible for several domains. Uh, but it's hardly possible that you're gonna have two different teams, one responsible for fulfillment and another responsible for fulfillment communication. They're really tightly coupled. This is the same business domain, it's still fulfillment. It's just a technical reason why the fulfillment communication is extracted into another microservice. Um, so I, I wouldn't bother 
implementing an extra endpoint in fulfillment and doing all the stuff. And yeah, I just I ask because actually from my point of view, like I, I would expect that the endpoint already, not just for fulfillment communication, but in general, like when you have fulfillment microservice, you can expect like get all or something. But yep. it's just another filter. But from other side, what you suggested, it's you need to communicate with database. It's also kind of co complex solution because you need to yeah, like set up everything. You need to describe entities and support right. this if something changing. Yeah, that's a very good point. Um, it's a very good point. So there is a solution how you can put um, it, it's actually probably a topic for another session. Uh, what to do if you have to build several microservices in scope of one bounding context? Uh, do you want to put them also in different repositories? Do you want to use a monorepo for them? Uh, because if you use a monorepo, then you don't have problem with setting up database connection. You just reuse the same entities, the same, you know, the same repositories. Uh, right, uh, we, we can have the session, yeah, we can have the session, it's not going to be a long one, maybe like half an hour, um, but there are solutions and there are options, but you, you're completely right, yeah, you can, as I said, you can draw blue lines between these two, and this is a perfectly, going to be perfectly working solution as well. Okay. Any more questions? Oh, why not to just subscribe on event instead of time trigger? On fulfillment completed event? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a good question. I thought about this option and I've forgotten the answer why I discarded this option. Well, one thing come to my mind why it can be bad that we can miss some events probably. But in case of time trigger, we guarantee like we notify users about all completed fulfillment. No, 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 that wasn't the reason. No, it's completely completed. Like the, the examples are from the real order management system. We can behind the fulfillment completed it was an invoicing system which actually generated invoices, and we don't want to have a fulfillment completed without really invoice and descent to the customer, right? So uh, we don't want to <laughs> to lose the fulfillment completed events. So that's for sure. Uh, Perhaps time triggered has an advantage that you can, for example, if you have access to database, you can scan all um, um, uh, fitted um, fulfillments and send it as a bulk uh, uh, delegation to the communication stuff. As in, in the, if, if you subscribe an event, you should react individually on, on, on everyone. Yeah, but the communication is also individual. In yeah, it, 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 was it, this. it can provide us a yeah. bug stuff. So. Yeah, sorry, I, I can't really give you any reasons now why that wouldn't work. That's actually, yeah, that would work probably. If if I remember that, <laughs> either I can tell it in the next session if you're going to have another one, or I can send it over email to the recipient list. But sorry, I. I can't give you any yeah. reason. Yeah, okay. it might be a good solution as well. Yeah. yeah the the important thing is to not do it as a part of the main fulfillment flow because then this fulfillment flow will be overloaded with like auxiliary uh, actions you have to do uh, in addition to the fulfillment. It's good to move it away from this uh, main flow uh, and either through this solution or uh, as a process which will be triggered by fulfillment completed, probably should work as well. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, that, that's it from my side. <laughs> okay. And then, actually, it's almost it from my side as well. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just a summary uh, kind of slide that uh, just few rules which I would advise to follow. The first of all, if you want to add a new microservice, uh, yeah, think twice and have a good justification to do it. Uh, if uh, you have an upper, if in order to execute an operation, you need to do additional synchronous calls. Uh, this is this is a smell. Check your design. Check uh, the split of microservices. Is it right? Um, then the choreography communication pattern is in most cases preferable pattern over the orchestration-like communication because orchestration introduces unwanted uh, dependencies between microservices. In in most cases, it's better to avoid fed messages. And also, it's important to have an understanding of responsibilities of every domain in your system and uh, keep an eye on it and try not to let responsibilities of one domain to leak or domain knowledge to leak into other you know, microservice, other domain. This is a kind of summary, and that's all what I have for today.